What's going on everybody, Jade up here. Today's video we're going to be talking about a uh, beginner's guide to tanking. What I'm going to be talking about is how to taunt in the game. I'll be going over the skills, uh, skill lines that you'll want to look at to start leveling up. I'll talk a little bit about the armor pieces and we'll talk about monster sets. We'll talk about traits and enchants you want to start looking for. I'll give you a suggestion uh, to start tanking in. I'll give you the, the cheapest alternative and I'll give you a decent alternative and then um, I'll give you what main tanks normally wear in uh, trials. And then what we'll talk about as well, we'll talk about a vampire. Is it good for you or is it bad for you? Uh, the fourth thing we'll talk about is attributes, how to set up your attribute points. And the fifth thing we'll talk about is CP. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. How to taunt in the game, right? Let me go ahead and buy this respec skill thing. And we'll, we'll go over the, the tanking aspect of it. So there's only three ways to taunt in the game. One is the Undaunted, Undaunted um, skill line. And the way that you get Undaunted is once you hit level 45 or uh, when you get out of the starter zone, go to your home faction uh, area, which would be Stonefalls, Glenumbra, or Aradon. Go to the bar, talk to the people sitting at a table. Uh, there'll be a quest marker over there and then do the quest line uh, basically all you got to do is just go to the dungeon in that starting area just walk in walk out go back over here to the bar talk to them and then you unlock the adonant skill line uh, once you hit 45 what you can do is you could go to your hometown which is your big city where you can respect your attributes your skill line uh, and you would go to the Undaunted Enclave. Storm um, Deshawn is here, Stormhaven, and or Grotwood. And here is Glen Umbra, and here is Ardon. So you can go there, and, and once you get 45, you'll get a letter in the mail. And let me see if I actually have it. I don't think I would have it anymore. No, I deleted it. Okay. So you'll get a, a letter in the mail saying, hey, um, you reached level 45 or something like Undaunted, whatever. I haven't been 45 in a minute. Uh, but anyways, you will get that. Um, you, you will get that letter in the mail. Uh, go to the Undaunted Enclave uh, at your home faction, which if you're EP, you would go to Deshaun and go here. Talk to the three people there and you can start doing your daily pledges. And that's what it's called, daily pledges. Three quests that pop up daily. They restart. They reset. Um, usually at 12 a.m. Eastern, um, but right now, if daylight saving times and stuff, it's like 1 a.m. Central. Uh, but it but it restarts around that time. So, uh, anyways, that's how you start unlocking the Undaunted pledges. So we'll go back over here and we'll just kind of show you some stuff. All right, so we have uh, Inner Fire, which is the uh, um, single target ranged ability. Now, every taunt in this game is a ranged, or excuse me, a single target taunt. There is no AoE taunt. If they did do an AoE taunt, it would literally, I feel, make tanking 10 times easier. We don't really need an AoE taunt. But anyways, there is only, um, there is only a single target um taunt and there's only three ways to do that one is inner rage or inner fire um you get this from undaunted basically what it does is it's a ranged taunt you taunt somebody from a far away it goes all the way up to 28 meters taunt them and they gain aggro on you for 15 seconds good to go a lot of people use inner rage and the reason why is because it's magicka a lot of tanks build into mag recovery so that's why i do know quite a few people that use stam morph of it and they prefer that more but to each their own I prefer Magicka. The other way to get that is uh, the other way to taunt single target taunt is to go with try focus and use an ice staff you fully charge heavy attack with an ice staff that will taunt one target for 15 seconds I personally do not like doing that and the reason why is because it's slow and it just it's just shit it's just slow that's that's the biggest reason it's just slow if i could light attack and pull aggro i would probably use an ice staff 
um, over a lightning staff a majority of the time. Uh, but but yeah, it's just it's just super super slow. Uh, and again, at, at one you get 1531 uh, absorb shield on you, and then it goes up to 3k. It's it's shit too. Um, your other single target stamina um, ability is going to be puncture. Basically, you just go up and you poke somebody. You have to be seven meters away for this to work. Uh, a lot of people use pierce armor. The reason why is because it gives major fracture, major breach, which reduces the spell and physical resistance. A lot of people use this. I do know quite a few people that use ransack, uh, but they just they just prefer minor resolve over helping out the group. So I prefer this one. It helps out the group a little bit, a little bit more. Um, for that and that's how you taunt in the game those are your abilities and how to taunt and I will show you right quick how um, what each individual skill or how to taunt looks like so first we're going to look at um, inner fire oops and this is what it looks like if you look closely right here you will see a little, um, looks like a sound wave or whatever, like a little wave of circles going to it. And I'll slow it down right there so you can see. The next one is the fully charged heavy attack from an eye staff. So what this looks like. And then you have puncture. Or pierce armor. So those are your three ways to taunt ads. <laughs> Alright, so now we're going to talk about skills. I'll go over some um, some skill lines that you need to probably level up. Obviously, depending on what class you are, this is a general guide. So if you want to tank on a Nightblade or Sorg or Warden or Necro or Templar or whatever, definitely level up all of your skill lines and make sure that you can morph every single one of them. Because you never know when one of these skills are going to change and you'll want to level it up later. So obviously the um, one hand and shield, you level all this up to 50. Uh, the bow, uh, it's optional, you can or you can't. Uh, the only reason why is volley, basically it, it keeps your crusher up uh, time. And we'll go over crusher in a second. Uh, destruction staff you'll definitely want to level this up later down the road when you get more comfortable tanking you'll definitely want to have blockade and potentially ellie ellie drain resto staff you'll definitely probably want to get this uh, resto ulti for my 20 second shield ulti um, build this right here this ultimate is absolutely insane and is amazing as far as your armor pieces you can level up all three of those it's fine Vampire, is it worth it? For me, it is because I use Invigorating Drain. I get five ultimate every one second for three seconds. It's super nice. The recovery is not bad as well. And, uh, I mean, you take less damage at 30% health, 33% base health and all that stuff. I mean, or below 50% health, whatever. You take less damage. So it's kind of it's kind of nice. As far as guild, uh, fighters guild, you wanna you wanna level up all of this stuff. Mages guild, balance, definitely wanna get this one. Uh, basically, you sacrifice health health to give you major resolve, major reward, and give you magic uh, give you magic back. So it's super super nice. Psychic order, um, you can level up all of this stuff if you wanted to, but the only um, ones that I would level up is meditate and accelerate. Those are the only two that I would level up, and then I would use the um, here. Let me just go to here. And I'll show you. Um, I personally, let me just not do these. I personally would only level up this one to race against time. The only reason why is because you, um, it will give you a major expedition for four seconds. And then this one, uh, I would do deep thoughts because the only time I'm using this is to get stamina magicka back at a, at a quicker rate than uh, probably popping a pot. So that's the only reason why I would get that. Thieves Guild, don't worry about it. Undaunted, uh, everything in here, level it up and make sure that you can uh, morph them. Uh, these right here, your passive, you definitely, definitely want to get this one to 10 or at least 9. Assault rank, get aggressive Warhorn. You have to do PvP or BGs for this. You will definitely want this when it gives major force and it gives uh, people max stamina, max magic. That's super nice. 
Uh, rapids. You'll have, definitely want to get this one. Either morph is fine. I prefer this one. Uh, but either one is okay. Uh, vigor. Uh, whichever one is fine. Up to you. This one heals you more. Uh, but this one hits more people. Or hits, you know, it's a, has a wider, a wider range. So 10 meters instead of 15 meters. You won't have to worry about these two. Uh, barrier, it's nice to have if you if you want to use that, level it up. You can use it, just takes forever. Keep that in mind. Seed shield, that's totally up to you. Uh, purge, you definitely want efficient purge because it costs less. And then uh, stalwart guard, you'll definitely want this one, but you can also use this one as well. Uh, I prefer this one because it increases uh, the damage of other people. Gives a minor force, super nice. Obviously, all your racial passives, alchemy, get medicinal use, increases your pot, um, your pots. It's really, really nice. And then uh, you'll definitely want to level up provisioning. Adds 20 minutes to the duration of any food eaten, and then adds 20 minutes, 20 minutes to the duration of any drink consumed. So we'll definitely get those. Uh, and those what I, that's what I recommend. Now let's talk about. Uh, we'll talk about monster sets first, and those are what you get from doing Undaunted Pledges, the daily Undaunted Pledges. We'll talk about that, we'll talk about some armor, and we'll talk about uh, traits and enchants. So, monster sets first. I'll tell you the ones that I prefer, and the ones that I think that you should start working towards. Um, Earth Gore, it, I mean, you could get it, it's fine, it comes from Bloodroot Forge, it's a little bit tougher to get for a lot of people. Uh, but if you can get it, it it's nice in uh, situations where you don't have a healer. Uh, it's just really nice to have. Uh, it comes from Bloodroot Forge. Uh, Blood Spawn. It's a really nice set. Easy to get. Um, it comes from Spindle Clutch 2. I definitely highly recommend getting this one as well. Basically, when you take damage, uh, you can generate up to 14 ultimate and increase your physical and spy resistance. That part you don't really need. Um, but... If, as long as you're Nord, and we'll go over races in a second. Uh, but yeah, Nord, uh, you don't really need the extra resistance, but it is. It's kind of cool. But the 14 Ultimate is where you're looking at. Uh, and uh, Earth Core, back to here. This is if you have no heal or anything like that. This will heal um, next patch. This will only heal um, either you uh, or if you do Vigor or, or Energy Orbs or something like that. It heal If you do an ability to heal somebody else, uh, and the Earth Core procs on them, you will not get healed for this. So if you just use Green Dragon Blood and this procs on you, uh, when you're underneath 50% health, uh, you will basically get healed uh, back up to full. So it's it's just really nice, kind of like an oh shit uh, moment. Another set that you would want to get is Lord Warden. This comes from Imperial Pretty City Prison. It's a little bit tougher for some uh, players as well. Uh, and I highly recommend uh, you getting this set as well. This will help out your team. Basically what happens when you take damage, um, you spawn an orb. It's 8 meters wide and it just increases physical and spell resistance. It's just nice for, you know, your, your teammates. Stonekeeper. Uh, this comes from Frost Vault, which is a new dungeon with Rastone. It is a, um, it's a really fun set to use. Uh, basically what happens you hold block you get hit six times um, while you're holding block and then it releases a charge and you restore stamina and magicka and health it's just, it's just really nice roughly about every 20 seconds you can get this procced and and be good to go as long as you're holding block some honorary mentions uh, engine guardian is just a super super nice helmet to to gain uh, basically what happens it comes this comes from uh, dark shade caverns one and, or excuse me, Dark Shade Caverns 2. And basically what happens is uh, when you use an ability, 10% chance to summon a Dwarven um, Sphere. And it will either restore your health, stamina, or magicka. And it's actually quite a bit. So it's going to restore uh, roughly about 2k uh, health, stamina, or magicka every second for 6.5 seconds. So it's, it's really nice. So those are the monster sets I highly encourage you to get. They're super nice. Um, and, and they'll help you out in the long run. Now let's talk about traits. And then we'll talk about enchants. And we'll, then we'll talk about specific armor pieces. And then I will talk about um, the attributes and stuff after that. So yeah, let's talk about um, traits. 
So first I want to tell you what the big pieces are on your armor. A lot of times when you're talking to somebody else or when you're talking to me in stream, I'll say, hey, you, you know, if you ask, hey, what, what, my, what should my enchants be on these, uh, on my armor? And I'll say, well, on your big pieces, I suggest this. On your small pieces, I should suggest this. And on your shield, um, just, just do this and you'll be fine. And what that means is your big pieces are your helmet, your chest, and your legs. Your shield is also a, a big piece, but most of the time you're going to be using sword and board and, and uh, a Destro staff. So I recommend, you know, just using, um, yeah, I, I just recommend counting a shield as a small piece because you're going to be swapping bars um, quite a bit. So on your big pieces, which is helmet, chest, and legs. I would suggest going Tristat Enchant, which is right here. It's a multi-effect enchant. It gives you, uh, it adds 500 uh, Magicka, Health, and Stamina. So we'll talk about enchants and, and traits together. Um, so again, on your big pieces, I suggest going Infuse. So that's Helm, Chest, and Legs. And then doing Tristat Enchant if you can afford it. If you can't, I suggest going Healthy. That will give you 1144 max health, and it will be super nice to have. Now, with that being said, um, on your small pieces, I would also go healthy as well. Okay, so I did have a tri-step right there. I was just going to show you uh, what tri-step looked like. That's why I had that chest piece there. So, um, for your small pieces, for traits... Uh, as you can see, it says sturdy. I would go sturdy on your small pieces. I do have divines here, but I would go sturdy here. And the same thing with my shield, I would go sturdy. And then for those smaller pieces, I would go healthy here on shoulder, gloves, waist, and legs. And then I, I go healthy there. And then I would go stam on my shield. Uh, basically, when I swap bars, I would la rather lose a little bit of stam than health any of my health as you can see so again um, that's what i would do uh, big pieces if you can do price that so as far as some here are some here are some uh honorary mentions as far as traits go um here's the traits that you want to look for first you want to look for infused and sturdy those are your those are your two main uh traits i would look for some other ones that you could look for would be well fitted and divines and here's what, uh, where's a well-fitted at? Here's a well-fitted right here. Uh, well-fitted just reduces the cost of your roll dodge and sprinting. It helps out actually a lot. It helps out a lot, a lot. So I recommend um, looking at those. Uh, so again, sturdy, infuse, well-fitted. Those are your three main uh, traits that you want to look at. Some honorary ones would be divines. That's super nice. And I don't think I have a reinforced. Okay, here's a reinforced one. And reinforce uh, would be reinforced in the vines would be my honorary mention ones. And I just went shoulders. There we go. And where's uh, the mines? There it is. So the vines reinforce. Those are my honorary mentions. I wouldn't worry too much about those, but they are okay to use. So we talked about your traits. Uh, as far as jewelry traits go over here as far as jewelry traits go there's three that they come in robust where's magicka arcane which is magicka and healthy which i don't i actually have in healthy yep okay i do and healthy and it just increases your health stamina and magicka now we do have other traits and here are the other traits we have triune swift all these other ones right the ones that i recommend um learning and when you start learning your jewelry crafting is swift which increases your movement speed it actually is nice when you're doing score runs and stuff like that and trials that is super nice um so other ones i would look at is where is it at harmony whenever you use a synergy like when you take orbs or something like that and i did forget to go over what orbs are um what orbs mean or shards they just basically when you when you when you say hey i need a shard or an orb it restores um magicka or stamina which whichever one 
whichever one is higher so i have higher stamina so when i call for a shorter orb i'll restore um i'll restore stamina back as you can see if i had magicka back if i had magic higher magicka than stamina when i called for a shorter orb and i had um There we go. When I call for a shard or orb, I would get some magicka back. So harmony is uh, harmony is super nice to to get and uh, uh, and learn immediately if you can. And the other one you want to get and learn is infused. This one basically increases your jewelry enchant uh, by sixty percent. So it just makes whatever enchant you have in your jewelry um, a, a better than. As far as traits on jewelries go, um, I swap mine all the time. I've used Infuse on this set, and then other sets I, I have Swift, other sets I have Harmony, and other sets I just have Robust, or Arcane, or Healthy. Um, it's totally up to you. I would just keep them whatever they are at the moment, and then until you start getting in and learning more about tanking and stuff like that, then I would start, you know, swapping them up. As far as um, enchants go on your jewelry, a lot of people go uh, magic recovery or some will go shield play. As you can see here, reduces the cost of your bash by 304 and the cost of your block. That's the big one, Re reduce the cost of your block. A lot of people will go like two shield play and one mag recovery. Um, I swap mine all the time between mag recovery, reduce, um, reduce magic it cost, shield play, uh, increase pot passive or increase, reduce the cost of my pa, uh, potion cooldown or is it at I don't think uh, here it is reduce the cooldown of your uh, potions um, I've used that one a few times before so it, it, it's kind of up to you a lot of people just go two shield play and one mag recovery or two mag recovery one shield play uh, I would just start out with that and then until you start understanding tanking a little bit more on your end, then I could then you then I would start messing around with different enchants and see which one you'd like better. So I think that pretty much covers um, the traits and enchants, and we'll talk a little bit about the armor and what makes uh, armors. Um, okay, I thought I chose chess. What makes an armor set good for a tank? Now, here's uh, a, a few things and what makes an armor set good for tanks. Um, the biggest thing is what does it do for your group, All right? And that's probably the biggest thing that tanks need to look at. When you're looking at wanting to be, uh, when you're wanting to look at uh, supporting your group, you want to look at what does the five piece set do and how can it help out my group? Right? So when you look at Alkosh, Necklace of Alkosh, at the very bottom it says five items. When you activate a synergy, you send a shockwave, a shockwave from your position that deals X amount of physical damage and an additional X amount of physical damage over 10 seconds. Key part right here reduces the physical and spell resistance of an enemy hit by 3010 for 10 seconds. Now, reason why I Alkosh is so good and pretty much needs to be on every tank is because it reduces the physical and spell resistance by 3000 now the reason why this is key is because you remember how we were talking about pierce armor this reduces the physical and spell resistance by 5000 well look at it like this major fracture and major breach are not the same thing as Alkosh and the reason why is because Pierce Armor is a major fracture, major breach. Alkosh is just a flat value that gets redu reduced. Now, if it would say something like reduces, um, a f uh, enemies hit reduces, um, or uh, they apply major fracture, major breach, then Alkosh would be a little bit useless to use on a tank. But since it's a flat value and there is no major or minor buff applied, um, it is fine to use and it's actually very very useful for a tank and and if you just look at it right here I'll tell I'll give you a little bit of input into tanking and stuff like that so when you're looking at the resistance cap for a lot of mobs we'll just say it's 18,000 
18,000 is the resistance of a boss, right? Well, when you apply, um, when you apply Alkosh, that's 30, 10, you're going to take away, right? And then from Pierce Armor alone, they're going to reduce it by 5280. And I screwed that up. I messed up my calculator because I was going to do it that way. So 5280 equals and then minus 3010. And you're already, the, and then once you just apply those two, it reduces the physical and spell resistance to that ad or that boss down to 9,710, right? Now, there are other ways to lower it, but those are the two biggest things in a tank really needs to have Alkosh on and really needs to have that Pierce armor going too um, just to kind of help lower that physical and spell resistance that's why um, I harp on telling tanks hey try and get Alkosh as soon as possible you'll help out your group more than you know so just lowering that down by that much is absolutely insane right um, so definitely want to look at getting Alkosh um, but you know, and I have another video for that that tells you what gear you want to get, uh, what you want to get for trials and stuff like that. So um, that's why that's why you want to look at that five piece set. Some other five piece sets that we look at is Torox Pack, and you're like, well, I don't even know why you would use that. There's literally no point for you to have that because well, it doesn't do anything, right? Well, not really. So we're gonna look at. Torox pack now and we'll go to all so we'll equip this and here's what it does right it, it decreases the weapon enchant cooldown and increases the potency by 30 percent and the potency is whatever enchant you have on your weapon now i didn't go over the enchants for weapons yet um but i kind of wanted to wait until we got to this part so we're looking at Torox pack and we have five pieces on and now we look at um, this set here. When you look at it, it says reduce the target's physical and spell resistance by 2740. So you remember how we said that 18,000, we'll just, you know, we'll just round it to 18K. So 18K minus 3010, right? And then minus 5280, right? And then minus 2740. Now, if you have all this up, this is only three things from a tank that you can, that you can apply, right? You're re you're lowering the resistance down all the way to 6,970 resistance. So just keep that in mind. That's why it's really um, really beneficial um, to run the Torox and the Alkosh set together because they work really well together. Um, Alkosh. Will let you proc that physical spell resistance, and then Torox will increase that Crusher enchant, and that's the enchant you want to get on your weapons, Crusher. Until you start getting into tanking more and more, um, I suggest running Crusher on both weapons. Once you get more um, familiar with tanking and get more comfortable tanking with an uh, with a lightning staff or an ice staff, whatever, um, then then you'll you know then. Know, you can start putting crusher only on this one and then on your front bar you can put a shock enchant which we came which i came up with uh with my group why do i only have one hand oh there we go okay i was wondering what was going on so one hand so we started i started putting shock enchant on uh infused shock enchant then i did a decisive shock enchant basically to help proc an off balance and off balance increases more damage for stamina ability or stamina character anyways um so yeah so looking at different different sets like that you just really want to look at that five piece set and see what it can do for your group Evan is another good one you would want to get you know powerful assaults nice uh, but none none of those obviously but powerful assaults knight Evan's nice dragon's nice uh, the reason why dragon is nice is because it reduces your ultimate cost by 15 percent uh, in dungeons, I've used it in a few trials, but for the most part, uh, I've only used it in one, and that's like in trash pools uh, because I'm never around the group. Um, so I put this on just to kind of speed up my ultimate, be able to proc it more. Uh, but that's what you want to look for in tanking. You want to look for the five piece set and see what it does and see how it helps out your group.
that's what you want to look for as far as, as far as tanking. Now, we talked about our enchants uh, on our weapons. We talked about our traits. Uh, our, our traits on our weapons, you definitely want to go and fuse on your two-handers. And then for your one-handers, I suggest going um, decisive if you're a Nord. If you're anything else, I would go um, probably charged or decisive, either one. Uh, basically, what decisive does is here it is. Uh, whenever you gain ultimate, um, you got a 20% chance to to gain one additional ultimate. So it's it's you know a little bit of a proc chance type of thing, but but yeah, I mean it's it's nice to have uh, decisive there. I I have tried uh, shock on here, um, but I just changed my other one to infused, and uh, infused is nice. Charge is okay, uh, but decisives uh, will help sometimes help you get that wool horn a little bit quicker. Uh, okay, so yeah, we talked about enchants on our weapons, jewelry, and armor, and we talked about uh, the traits, we talked about the enchants and all that stuff. Now, let's talk about our character and how to get your attributes distributed um, to what you want. And I'm going to show you. So, uh, and then we're going to talk about races, which race is better. As far, let's talk about race first. What I prefer race-wise is uh, Nord. It's just, it's just a nice race to have. Um, basically, the reason why here, when you take damage, you get a, get a five ultimate, and that happens every ten seconds. So every 10 seconds, you're getting five ultimate every time, just off of your passive. It's absolutely insane. Whatever, uh, it's super super nice. You also get 1500 stamina when you get a thousand max health. It's obviously uh, nice as well. And then you get your physical and spell resistance up by 3960. That is a shit ton. Uh, but anyways, it's it's just super nice. And then this one doesn't really matter too much. But anyways. Uh, it, it is just super nice to be a Nord Argonian. Uh, the reason why Argonian is nice is uh, because when you use a, po a potion, you gain 4,000 health, stamina, and magicka. No matter what potion you take. If you take a tristat potion, which I'll show you what those do. Um, and tristat potions restore 10,000 health immediately, 7,000 magicka, 7,000 stam. On top of that, you would restore 4,000 health magicka and stamina so uh you know 14,000 health and so on and so forth uh even if you take a lingering health pot you know this gives you um you know so much health every one second but you're still going to get 4,000 self health stamina and magicka same thing if you just only take a a stamp pot you'll get 10,000 uh stamina 4,000 health and magicka that's just super nice uh, Imperial is also a good one. You reduce your all your abilities by three percent. That's kind of nice. Um, but yeah, anyways, th those are those are some honorary mentions and some good ones there. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna put on a full set. So basically, here's what here's what I do every time. Every time I adjust my attributes and how I adjust it the way I do. What I do is whatever content I'm doing, um, let's just say I'm going to start doing, um, you know, dungeons. All I'm doing is dungeons, right? I'm going to look at my gear and see which gear that I have and what I want to use, right? Okay, I know what gear I want to use. I want to use dragon, so we'll type in dragon. I will use dragon and I do want to use potatoes. Uh, this is a set that I call it. I call it potatoes. And the reason why I want to use potatoes is because I don't want to work that hard. I just want to have a good, I just want to kind of go in here and just kind of fab around. Um, do I want to use, uh, and then I'll put on stonekeeper. Where's my stonekeeper uh, shoulder? And then for jewelry and stuff, or for weapons and stuff, I'll do, we'll do um, all those. And the only reason why is because it just gives that mag recovery. So we'll do all those here. Uh, so we got mag recovery. Uh, we got reduce uh, reduce ultimate by 25%. And then we got you know this set here that's going to help us out too. 
All right, cool. So we got our set. And then what I do here from here on, uh, what I'll do is I'll check my resistances, see what my resistance is at, just, you know, for me. Um, oh, and we'll talk about Moonstone uh, now as well. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll make sure that we eat our food. I personally like using uh, Tristat food. Gives us more, uh, more resources. I forgot to go over that. Apologize. Um, but anyway, so I will make sure I have a Moonstone on. Usually I use the Lord to give me max health. Uh, and then I'll make sure I eat my food. I'll make sure all my gear is on and make sure I have either healthy or tristat enchants on my big pieces. And I'll just kind of make sure that I have everything. I'll make sure I have all this good. And then we'll get into CP, but I'll make sure that I have my CP distributed. And then what I'll do is I'll see, okay, I have 29k health, I have 19k stam, 16k magicka, 18k recovery. Okay, that's not bad. I do kind of want a little bit more stam. I, I like to have about 20, give or take, um, you know, give or take 2k. So I'm like, okay, I'm at 20. Now let's go to health. I like having about 38k health. So we'll go all the way up to 35k. And then, okay, we're at 35. Let's go to 40. Let's go to, let's go to 50k. So we're at 38k. I like being at about 38k. Um, and I do like to be roughly at 18k magicka, give or take a k. Um, and then I'm like, okay, well, let's go here. It's just kind of like whatever you prefer. And then we'll go, we'll go 21k stam. And that's how I do my attributes. Just make sure that you have your your skill, your um, your armor on. Make sure you have your skills on, and your pass is loaded up. And make sure you have your CP. And that's how I go about distributing my attributes and then of course always make sure that you have your food on and your moonstone buff active um, don't forget those because when you start to put your points in here you won't see uh, you won't see this number you'll see something else and that's how I go about distributing my attributes again just make sure that you have all your passes uh, passives in on the abilities that you will be using you know this helps out a lot as well so just keep that in mind uh, and that's how that's how I set that up now as far as you know cp goes we're going to go ahead and reset this clear everything and we'll accept that so cp is everyone is confused on cp but that's okay i'm going to help you out ironclad and we can just do this as a rule of thumb you can either go 81 here or 72 here the reason why is because it's a flat valued number. We're at 23%. We go up to, excuse me, 81. God damn. Okay, there we go. We're at 81. Um, so basically what you want to look at is your percentage. So when leveling, when you're, when you're putting points in your CP, you want to look at your percentages. So as you can see, we're at 24.06. All you're going to do is take that point, everything from that decimal to the right, you're just going to cover that up. All right. Don't even care about it because it doesn't matter it's not gonna you're not gonna get 24.06 reduced damage you're gonna get 24 percent reduced damage right so if we put if we went over here and we and let's just go down one we go over here and we're we're like 80 80 points in here you're not gonna get 23.9 or you're not gonna get 24 you're only gonna get 23 percent so that's why i say you can either go 72 here or you can go 81 here Again, uh, 81 is just super nice. Reduce uh, um, you reduce the damage you take from direct damage attacks. It's just super nice to have about 81 in here. And again, with CP, um, depending on how you do it, um, every 10 points you will get one passive in here. So when you bash, you have a 20% chance to heal for so much. And then you go up to the, and then the next milestone would be 30. So then when you use roll dodge, your physical spot resistance is increased by 660 for three seconds. The next one is going to be 75 so we'll go all the way up to 75 uh, create your critical damage uh, when you take critical damage you heal for 324 health and then the next one is 120 points you can only put 100 points into one active um one active uh you know um what is it called i can't even think of what it's called uh cp cp thingy whatever ironclad whatever i can't even think what it's called I apologize. I had it written down on my notes, but now I can't find my notes. So 
whatever. Anyways, uh, you can only put 100 points into one uh, specific um, area, right? So again, I can't put any more points into into ironclad, but I can put more points into everything else. Uh, each tree is different, so we'll just pull ahead and put 81 into here, and we'll confirm that. Once you confirm it, it locks it in to where you can't adjust it, but you can add more points in. You can't lower it, but you can add more points in. And then once that's locked, um, what, however many points you have in here um, will then be um, stuck as well. So now these passes are part of us. Keep in mind too, that uh, when you are putting points in here, if you read the bottom of this, don't read, I mean, this part doesn't matter, but the steed will boost your health and shields of your damage. So basically when you put points in here, it will increase your health. Now, what we're gonna do is I'll show you what I'm talking about. Clear that, confirm. Now look at our health, we're at 32. Okay, so now we're gonna put, we're gonna put our 81 points in here. Now we're at 37 per uh, 37 K. So just just keep that in mind when you're leveling. That's why CP is really important. It helps out a lot. Um, as far as these other ones, uh, you don't really need if you're a DK, you don't really need points in the spell shield. Uh, the reason why is because you have a passive that gives you spell shield. So just make sure you read your passives, stuff like that. Uh, as far as resistance, PvE, you don't need crit resistance, uh, and you're not using medium armor for the most part, so you don't really need that as well. Um, Hardy and uh, Elemental Defender. Now, this is your bread and butter when it comes to uh, putting your points into. For the most part, if you're, all you're doing is dungeons and, then, and things of that matter, I would probably do um, something like this, 49-49. It's just a basic setup CP. Something like 81 Ironclad, 49 Hardy, Ellie Defender. Um, you can put 40 points in the thick scan. Uh, and then you can kind of split this up a little bit. There we go. Put some in there and then put some in here. Um, but as far as Hardy and Ellie Defender, Hardy uh, reduces the... Um, so if you go into a trial and there is mo and you're and you're taking more physical uh, poison or disease damage, you're taking more into that, you know, like Sanctum or something like that, uh, you'd probably put more points into Hardy uh, than you would into Ellie, Ellie Defender. Um, and when it comes to putting points in here, what you want to do is you always want to try and make sure that you're closest to a whole number here. So we're at 13%. You know what I mean? So you're just going to kind of put put something in here. Uh, that way, you know, that way you're closest to a whole number. Now again, there are such things as like jump points where we're at 17.98. If we put a point in here, it'll jump up to 18%. So um, yeah, you can you can um, either raise, um, raise it up to 18% or you can just lower it a little bit lower down to the 17% and use these other four points into something else. So again, hopefully that kind of explained a little bit on where to kind of distribute your points. My rule of thumb on where to uh, where to put your points is basically uh, basically like this, and we had talked about it numerous times in stream. Uh, whatever dungeon you're going into, and whatever you're going to get hit with the most, um, you'd probably want to put a put points more points into there. So if you're in asylum main tanking, you're more than likely going to get hit with the physical attack more. So you're going to want to put more a little bit more into Hardy. Um, if you're into cloud rest, you're going to be taking no heart, no um, physical damage, and you're going to be taking all elemental damage. So you could probably take every point out of there, and you could probably go all the way up to I don't know 75 or where's it? Where's that sweet number? 64, 64, and then put the rest in the thick skin because you're going to be taking some dot, a lot of dot damage in that trial, and then you could put more, you know, some into here something like that would be something something similar to this but again that's that's how um, <coughs> excuse me that's how you kind of distribute your points in the red tree as far as the green tree and some of these other ones let me get a drink right quick now as far as your green tree and stuff like this um, I, what I like to do is probably put about 75 or so in here 
or 70 you can put 72 I've started actually lowering this more and more uh, because I don't block as much anymore but I've actually started lowering this a lot um, I think I went to like 62 or something like that oh, okay 61 whatever uh, so I started lowering this a lot actually and putting more points into other things so again this all has to do with what what you do the most um, if you hold block a lot um, I would probably go up to about 75 or so or excuse me 72 and then for tumbling if you roll dodge a shit ton I would probably stop roll dodging uh, but put a little bit of points into here 48 if you dodge roll a lot uh, I would definitely go probably 75 into Arc Arcanist or 100 if you want to waste your points in there uh, 75 points is uh, actually more than enough and tenacity if you heavy attack a lot um, you could probably put you know 56 I think it is 56 or 64 in here totally up to you you could also go up to 75 if you're um, if you don't heavy attack enough so um, I personally like going the 64 it's kind of nice there and then putting the rest points into break for your spinner most of the time I put it in the sprinter uh, mainly because uh, I do do a lot of speed runs and I sprint a lot so it's kind of you kind of want to distribute these points into what you do uh, rather than what somebody else does so an arcanist uh, tenacity these are usually what I have it then and then this is usually what I have 72 48 depends uh, if I'm not dodge rolling at all sometimes I'll just go up to like what is it like 20 percent yeah 20 percent 20 points excuse me and then put quite a bit into here and then if I do have to break free quite a bit or at least a little bit I'll, I'll lower this some and put some points into here but again it's it's totally up to you and what you do um, the most uh, I highly recommend doing like 75 64 here ish and then do about this and then put the rest into like sprinter or break free or something like that as far as the blue tree, um, this is what I like to do. Uh, bless because of the heal. 75. Damn it. I'm using my mouse wheel, so it constantly keeps. 75, 72. This is what I usually like to do. Um, since I'm not a warden, I do like to put some points into here as well. Um, now, I, me personally, I don't do damage. Uh, so I just kind of put some points in the here randomly uh, basically until I hit that 120 mark and then I come over here and put the rest into either physical weapon or staff expert um, but the reason why I put last stand in here for depending on what trial is because it gives me major heroism there's only two ways to gain major heroism in the game and that's from doing this CP or being a warden and using shimmering shields so those are the only two ways to get major uh, heroism that I know of. Uh, there might be a pot that does it or something like that. I don't even remember. Um, but that's why I put 75 or 120 points into here in uh, some trials. Uh, but if you're not going to put 75 points into here for that or 120 points into there, then I would just go something like this 100, 100 to increase your heals. You know, you could probably go, I don't know. Just something random like this, depending on what you have you attack with a lot, and then something. You know, it, it's that's why I put a bunch of like 75, 75, 72, I think. So then I put the 120 points in the heat. If you're lower CP, um, I, I if I was lower CP, I would start out putting points into here, Hardy and Ellie Defender. Um, probably, you know, let's say, you know, you have enough points to put like 19, right? Or, you know, 38 points. So 19 and 19. Um, the rest I would try and put into here at least until I got up to about 60 or so. I think it's like 64 is the cutoff. 61, we'll just go 61. So just go up to like 61 here. And then I would slowly start putting points into these until you get about 49. 49. You'll, you'll start to see a little bit of a difference when you do roughly 49, 49. You'll get up to like 81, stuff like that. So that, um, that pretty much covers a lot of stuff when it comes to tanking. Um, I'll also go over some um, 
some consumables that I like to use. Uh, beginner tanks, uh, obviously try and use your tri-stat foods. Absolutely amazing. It increases your uh, health, magic, and stamina. I highly recommend using this sets. Um, as far as pots go, you can use your just regular trash pots. This is what we call them, trash pots, uh, which is just only does it only does one thing so these only give you stamina uh, and some major endurance which increases your stamina generally uh, but yeah so it just basically these are trash pots basic stamp stamp pots uh, magic pots health pots those are trash pots um and as far as if you have a little bit of money you've been playing the game for a little bit you can use tri stamp pots they actually help out a shit ton they're amazing. Um, I highly recommend getting some tri stat pots. If you can afford them, if you can't afford them, don't worry about it. Use your use your um, trash pots or use the crown store ones that you get for free uh, from doing or from getting your stuff that pops up here. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Poisons um, on your weapons. I don't recommend it. Uh, the reason why is uh, just because it overlaps your enchants and they're buggy right now, so I just I just wouldn't use them. Uh, they're buggy in a sense that if I put this uh, poison on here, um, it will not show it physically, um, but my enchant on my back bar will then change to a white um, uh, crusher enchant, so it won't help out my group as much uh, when I swap bars. As far as, uh, I, one thing that I did want to uh, mention, stam recovery on a tank doesn't really matter. They changed this a long time ago, and I'll show you what I mean. Where, okay, I can use Vigor. Alright, so stam recovery on a tank. Alright, as you can see, I'm at 40% and I'm at 7.1k. Uh, as you can see, while I'm holding block, I'm not getting stamina back. And even when I'm hitting Green's Dragon Blood, I'm not getting stamina back. And Green's Dragon Blood actually gives me um, stam recovery. The reason why uh, is because when you're holding block, the only way for you to get stamina back is by using energy orbs or shards from a, from a Templar. Or uh, when you take damage, where is it at? And, yeah, uh, when you heavy attack, obviously. Uh, but where's the one where you take damage? Uh, you restore magic and stamina when you take damage for each piece of armor, heavy armor equipped. This effect can occur once every four seconds. So there's only so many ways you can gain stamina back. Now, I'm not going to go into the class skills. I'm sure some of you are going to be like, oh, well, what about Earth and Heart? Well, yeah, okay, if you're a DK and you use uh, Earth and Heart ability, or it's the last one, Helping Hands, um, you cast an Earth and Heart ability, you gain 990 stamina. Yeah, I mean... You can do that, sure, but not everybody's want to play is gonna want to play as a DK tank. That's why it's a uh, general beginner's game. So when I use Ignis shields, I can just sit here and, and stand back. But just keep that in mind. Uh, and when you're holding block, you don't gain stand back. Now here is a trick. I'm now I'm just kind of in the tips and tricks part of this. Uh, just kind of things off the top of my head that I remember. Uh, when you look at this, as you can see, I'm really low on stam uh, if, if you ever become low on stam here's what you want to do if you can heavy attack into igneous shields and the reason why is because you get more return that way see as you can see we'll do it again so as soon as you heavy attack that arms pulled back hit igneous shields so it'll count as a heavy attack well I don't know why I didn't hit that oh I don't have any stam I don't have any magic gun so as you heavy as you pull that arm back, hit that igneous shields, and you you will get a crap ton of stamp back with your fully charged heavy attack going into your igneous shield. You get quite a bit of stamp back, and you can actually heavy attack igneous shields and block at the same time, and it will count as if you're blocking. So check this out. I'll show you. So heavy attack igneous shield block. As you can see, so I'm heavy attacking Igneous Shield. As soon as I hit that Igneous Shield, I'm blocking. But you're still going to get that return. And you're still going to be holding block. 
that's just a little that's just a little tip there uh and the and here's the reason why you want to use um a lightning staff or an ice staff i totally did not go over that the reason why is blockade and what happens is it, it'll apply my crusher enchant on the add which i have a crusher here uh, and it should apply that crusher enchant right now here let me just let me just throw it on uh always show okay so as you can see at the top of this right here it shows that little hammer that's a crusher enchant as you can see when i lay down this blockade it procs twice so once when i initially do it and the second time when it rolls out because my my blockade is continuously going when it's about to run out if i heavy attack it'll still apply it uh, so that's why a lot of tanks use the lightning stat light attack you can apply it it's just it's just easier to apply pressure with the lightning staff than it is uh, with an ice staff. I just don't like how slow the ice staff is. It's just totally preference. Well, um, I hope this guide helps you out some if you're new to tanking or want to get into tanking. Um, I, I'm, I've been tanking for a long time and this is probably the first time I've actually took time to actually sit down and kind of go through some of the g most general information for tanking. Um, I really honestly do hope that this guide helped you out in some way, shape, or form. Um, yeah, other than that, I, I appreciate your time watching the video. Uh, you take it, you guys take it easy, and hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Take care.